Let's take a look at a Schmerzal industrial interlock, which was used on the door system of an elevator that we recently retired at work. That's a, a lift in the UK, an elevator in America, um, due to reliability issues. And we replaced it with a new one. It's a mast climbing lift. It's the type of lift that r runs up a rack and pinion shaft. And in this case, it had swing doors on the outside. And part of that system was that this... Uh, when you landed at a particular floor, a solenoid would activate and pull the lock up to allow you to open the doors and then it would relax. Now, if the door was closed, um, then it would potentially, this wouldn't drop all the way down and it would potentially push it, this latch in, so it could drop down into the door. But once the door was in position, and I'm going to zoom in for this, I'll just do that right now. I have zoomed. So when this uh, arrived at the door, at the floor level, the solenoid would pull this in and it doesn't drop down all the way. It drops down just enough that the door can actually push it as it closes. But to make sure the door's there, it has a magnet on the door. And this is a safety interlock system so that when the door does close and it pushes that up, uh, it drops down much further. And it also makes an extra electrical contact in here. I'll just remove all these bits because I have removed them before. This bit was held, probably to avoid tampering, with uh, little pins uh, that were press fit into the plastic. But uh, this cover here, I'm going to show you this with a bit of extra lighting. Uh, but if we take a look at this, this is a, again a safety interlock to make sure the door is actually there. So I shall focus onto this. I don't know if you're going to see this. The, the contacts are not terribly visible in here. Give me a moment, I'm just going to try and make this better. Okay, let's try this. So we've got one set of contacts at the bottom that are made when the solenoid pulls in, so it knows that it has actually managed to release the doors uh, for opening. But, and if the door is not there, these top contacts do not actually close enough to actually make contact with the safety circuit, which is the top two connections. However, if I hold the magnet in position over this, <laughs> it's very, very stiff to do this. And then I release this. Oh, this is going to be so tricky. But you can now see that those contacts have gone all the way up. So that's it with the door closed and the magnet in position. If I push this up till it latches again, you'll see that it doesn't close, that it actually stops short. And that just gives it an indication the door is actually properly closed. Okay, I shall turn this little light off. Like that. Right, let's open this and find out how it works. Other things worth mentioning, and I'll just zoom out for this. Other things worth mentioning are the triangular key here. That literally goes on to the pivot mechanism so that if the lift is faulty, the lift engineer can come and they can put their triangular key in that, or this side, and they can emulate the, the solenoid and they can actually open the door and let people out of the elevator. Right, this is the tricky bit because honestly, this just exploded everywhere. My colleagues were most unimpressed with what I did earlier on because you'll see there's a very sticky spring in here and it just shot all over my colleagues. Wonderful. They were perplexed. <laughs> they kind of knew it was going to come. <laughs> That's perhaps not the word to use. But it happened, and it was just all over the place. They did help me find the bits, and I had to work out how to put this thing back together again. <laughs> this is going to be... This is going to do it again, isn't it? It's just going to go everywhere. Right. So let's try and get this out. This little cover, there's a magnet that you can now see, the bit that pushes up. Uh, is this going to come off in a controlled manner? No, that's going to have to come off. This is going to have to come out. And then, is it going to come off? Oh God, it's trying to escape. It's trying to escape and it's very powerful spring. Right. Here we go. So here's the mechanism that pulls back and you can see that it's blocked by this thing that slides up and down. And this literally has a magnet in the end. And as I bring this magnet close to it, it pops up. And it does seem to be gravity driven. It doesn't seem to be spring loaded as such unless it's the spring of the mechanism itself. This little arm here goes on there and slides backwards and forwards. And that goes on to the uh, 
bit of the bolt that actually goes up and down here, it basically controls its movement. And uh, the metal tab literally just pulled this open. It's just going to explode in bits. But the gist is that uh, the magnet is needed to be able to operate it fully and let it drop fully. Let me just work this out. So if I stick this in here, this I'm just so worried about this thing. It really does ping everywhere forcibly. Uh, so if this is up, the right, okay, so that, oh right, okay, so that can't drop. So there's something else stopping this. And then this is pushed up. It does allow that. So when you push it up at ramps, it, pu it actually physically pushes the magnet down. And the magnet has to be pushed up to release it. I think that's actually under here. I think that's possibly this little thing that's actually doing that. And that is simply the reset mechanism up there. Uh, the plunger itself has oh, got this spring that is very long and it's covered in grease and it just, yes, it took quite a long to find, uh, quite took quite a long time to find this when it shot across the room, um, and likewise the actual the bottom pin here goes into that mechanism down there that operates the electrical contacts, and if it doesn't drop down fully, it doesn't make uh, the top contacts. But then when it does drop down fully, it does make them. That's fundamentally it. it looks fairly simple, but it's not that simple. This is the interesting bit, the magnetically pushed, uh, which is quite powerful, uh, mechanism that slides up and down. But there we have it, uh, the uh, Schmerzel uh, mechanism. What's that little red dot for? And sometimes I wonder if, if some of these are for telltale things to show if you've opened or not, or maybe it's a bearing. I don't really know, uh, but... Uh, that's the mechanism and you can see there's another wee pin here that's another of the latching the pins that they just pushed in it's not a screw for to avoid people tampering with it and bypassing it but it certainly took a long time to work out how to put this back together again but that's it the inside of a schmerzel elevator safety interlock from our old lift the new lift still has the doors that swing out there, but it's got a very interesting mechanism, I should show it in a video, that uh, it physically, a bar drops down and blocks the doors from opening completely. It's much simpler, and it's activated by a linear uh, actuator on the lift itself with a huge alignment plate, and when it comes up to the level of the door, uh, before you can open the doors, this plate winds out and actually hits a pin that physically unlocks the doors. But there we have it. The Schmerzel safety interlock. Quite interesting. If you decide to open one, which I don't recommend because it won't go back together too easily, be aware there's a very powerful spring inside that will project items all over your workshop.